Hello, my name is Elaine Daly Birnbaum. I am a watercolor artist and I'm here today in Dixon, Illinois to do the award jury for the 37th annual Illinois Watercolor Society exhibition. We have, I believe, about 60 um, paintings that have been chosen. I went through these carefully. I take the responsibility of a juror very, very seriously, not only for the society and its members, but also for the world of water media in general. What I would hope to do with any exhibit that I am curating is to advance the expertise as well as the uh, use of water media in new, unusual, different, and also very traditional ways. So in this show, you'll see a spectrum of very classical watercolor paintings to very different and innovative watercolor paintings. I shared the quote before from Edgar Whitney who says, as an artist, what you do is you invite somebody into your painting. You are the host of this rectangle, and as that host, according to him, you better not bore me. Me being the viewer, any viewer, should not be bored or uninterested in looking at any of the paintings in this show. The painting that I awarded the best of show goes to Thomas Hertzberg in his What's News, Pussycat. This painting intrigued me from the beginning and I have gone back to it many, many times. Its composition is excellent. It has a strong diagonal thrust with counterpoints of vertical pieces. It has this white that's leading us in, it's a predominantly warm painting with so much interest throughout. Each piece is exquisitely rendered. It's an outstanding exhibit, I think, of the use of water media and the incredible use of imagination in presenting a well-composed, well-designed, exciting painting. This painting is absolutely intriguing from several aspects. Not only is the concept original, the design is exquisite with a strong horizontal bottom that's anchoring this plane or part of a plane against this strong diagonal. And then this, this wonderful line work going throughout, breaking up that background like that. The detail is something I invite everybody to pay close attention to, not only on the equipment, which is pretty phenomenal, but the groundwork that this is lying on. And there's even a little mouse running across here that's been included in this. It's a cool and warm combination painting, and it's rendered so beautifully that it was really, I felt, worthy of the first award of excellence. Very nice. The second award of excellence was given to Denny Bond for his painting, Alarm. This is a phenomenal painting. From a concept-wise, with all the time pieces, the circular movements going on, to these strong horizontals that break up the ground structures, the contrasting red and green up here breaking up a lot of the black and white, and still you see a real diagonal movement. The shadows are rendered in masterfully, I would say, and the whole work is absolutely exquisite, a well-deserved award of excellence in my mind. The third award of excellence in this show is awarded to Chris Kropinski 
for her painting Guavas and Grapes. This is an absolutely dynamite painting. She's a master of composition with the fruits leading into this round globular cup along with the grapes and the oval yellow of the um, lemons, of guavas, sorry, not lemons. The use of stripes, so difficult to work with in terms of fabric and shadows and movement, are beautifully handled here. And you have this nice diagonal line and this bright yellow that pulls us right in to our center of interest up here. Not only is it masterfully painted, the shadow work is phenomenal. It's really an excellent, excellent still life painting. The Evelyn E. Schultz Creative Spirit Award was awarded to Ingrid Albrecht for her watercolor painting, Wet. This is such a creative piece, one that one doesn't typically see, but that so beautifully illustrates the nature of watercolor and some of its beautiful characteristics and quality. It's Predominantly a dark painting, but a very warm dark painting with a lot of touches of color in here, warm colors. There's some line work, some <coughs> scuffle work, a lot of texture, and yet you can identify figures, abstracted, moving along. Brilliant touches of orange throughout the piece make this a really interesting, exciting piece. One that I want to study a little bit more and, and get into this person beautifully with Andrew Water Model in this painting. The Outstanding Figurative Award in this show was given to Z Fang for his painting Art Major. This painting is a loose watercolor depiction done in a very controlled way. I find it interesting. I find the color combination pleasing. I find that the background is absolutely fascinating when you're here to look at it. Very good. Outstanding Landscape Award was given to Howard Kuo for his painting at the corner of winter and spring. A very creative and well done painting. Cleverly using the green on the trees, of course indicating spring, but done to lead us through back here to a very winter, typical winter type of scene. It's the dichotomy of the two that, uh, that pull us into this painting handled very well. And then intimations of floral down here, just a small spattering of color to remind us that indeed it is a spring painting. Nicely done. The Outstanding Abstract Non-Representational Award was given to Christine Alfrey for her painting, Figuring It Out. This is interesting components to this painting. This artist clearly has developed her own language, her own mark making, and her own little signs and signatures. And that consequently move us, she uses them effectively to move us throughout this painting in a very intentional way. The predominantly cool is juxtaposed with nice warm touches so it's a well-balanced, artistically speaking, it's a very well-balanced painting and done very well with interesting mark making. The Charles Streisel Memorial Award was given to Ratinda, Ratindra Das sorry, um, for his painting, Alaskan Crabber. Beautifully abstracted images of boats, fairies, a water type of port scene, the dock, 
nice diagonals with strong verticals, uh, predominantly war painting with some beautiful cools that have been added throughout in the most useful placements. Um, a fresh, excellent, free almost looking um, yeah, depiction of tugboats or wharf scenes, etc. Very, very nice composition and well done painting. <laughs> The next award is the Director's Award, chosen by the director of the gallery. This one is given to Lawrence Rifati, Rifanti sorry, for his painting, Carly's Garden. This is a very intriguing painting, um, created in an unusual and classical, really, way that we often don't see much of anymore. It's very flat. There's not a lot of dimension in the painting. But it represents a very um, classical approach and excellent yeah. painting of the white and the shadows within the white. It's uh, beautifully rendered. Yeah. We'll next go through the honorable mention paintings. The first one that we've come to is given to Raymond Perez for his painting Pasta Dish with Merlot. Really look like a world though, does it? But that's the intriguing one of the intriguing things about this painting, which is I found to be very interesting, exciting. I wanted to know more about it. I have wanted to spend a little more time in it. In addition to the concept being new, different, therefore exciting, is that it's rendered beautifully with this flat wash of this pale as pale as peach color up here. And then the animals around this dish of pasta, it's a story within a story within a story. And I found it beautifully done and intriguing to look at. Nice job. The next honorable mention is given to Diana Shabino for her painting entitled Thicket. Um, this is an abstracted um, arrangement of a plant or floral, if you will, but done in an unusual and very interesting way um, with some very well thought out compositional elements. Not only do we have the indication of some flowers with some globular shapes and some leaf shapes. But all throughout, I don't, if you can see, there are these white and dark dots that carry us through and move us. We also have movement down here in this diagonal of the blue. But it's very well thought out in terms of how your eyes are going to move throughout this painting. The colors are very soft. Um, it's a very beautifully done uh, abstract of um, a floral type of painting. The next honorable mention is given to Patricia Maroshka for her painting Sea Grapes. This painting is of such interest to me. Um, cleverly pulled into this painting with this wonderful diagonal use here, stopping here. The detail in some of the leaves, but not all of the great leaves, or whatever you might call these, uh, is fascinating. And if you look at them for any period of time, you'll see they're predominantly underwater. They're uh, sea life or fish life. Um, also with just some design. The design elements are wonderful in this and it's painted beautifully with the contrasting reds and greens or orange and green. Very, very nice painting. The next honorable mention is Jack Tilton's painting of Salvage. This is a very more, more traditional type of painting but featuring watercolor at 
and some of its features at its very best, I think. Very hard to paint an interesting white building and make it stand out and noticeable, and one invites the viewer to come in for more of the story of what's going on in here and what is all the junk lying around. Beautifully based solidly down here with this line of green and dark here. Your eye stays within the painting with this nice dark diagonal up here, and it's very well done. Drips tearing of the um, building, rendering it an older building with history. There's some story here. Any wonder about it? Very good. The next honorable mention is Paul Feesing's painting, A Celebration of Clean Water. And it is indeed a celebration of clean water. Beautifully rendered water. And the colors, the cool colors that work so well throughout this whole painting are still even part of this, the fish shore. I'm probably, I'm not going to guess what it is. Um, this nice V pulling us in up here to this focal point of interest, and yet the water handled so well throughout is really exquisitely done. You can even see through the water. You can see his hands. You can see um, rocks in there. It really is clean water and beautifully painted. And the next honorable mention award goes to Ryan Fox for his painting, Boy in Venice. It's really a monochromatic painting until you start to look at it very closely when you're up. There's beautiful additions of lavender throughout here, over here on this area of interest with the boy. And yet, the artist is playing with us a little bit here. Um, making this really seem like it's supposed to be the focal point with the much greater value changes over here. You cannot take your eye off of that boy, however, and it's a very emotional and moving to see the back of a child like that in front of this enormous big city. It's this contrast again. Good paintings have a lot of tension, a lot of contrasts, and a lot of differences. And while this is handled monochromatically, so you think there might not be so many differences, the differences the artist wanted to make here are great and handled so well. This figure juxtaposed with that. It's very moving. Well done. As I mentioned before, during this show was a responsibility that I took very seriously and spent time with. I feel like these are my friends now. I know them pretty well. But I get a lot of questions about entering shows and pe pe uh, people who feel like they want to enter shows to get some recognition, they want to enter shows to move their career. Um, along a particular pathway, or just for some self-validation. Um, a few pointers about entering shows. I think you should always discriminate carefully as to the shows that you decide to enter. Um, look at the whole perspective and package carefully. And then always enter your best view. Now, your best piece typically will be one that you have strong feelings about. You're connected to it in some way. If you are connected to your painting in any way at all, it comes across. The viewer knows that. The viewer sees that. So what is the juror looking for when they are putting together a show, curating um, any exhibit? They're looking for diversity. They're looking for a range. They're looking for certainly technical merit. But technical merit alone is not sufficient. Um, a painting can be very perfectly rendered. 
can be of little interest or intrigue or excitement or have a story to tell. And when that happens, it's always so sad because as a juror you go, oh, I don't see it, I don't get it, you don't feel it. Remember the juror is one person, one human being. Their opinion is just that. It's an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. And you can agree or disagree with my opinions, and I hope you do. But when you do enter a show, know that you are simply entering something that you hope is your best piece to see how it fares sort of with your fellow artists, if you will, and in the eyes of one single juror. A rejection one time, as you know, can be an acceptance or even award winner the next time around. So don't be discouraged if this show was not one that you entered, and one that you entered rather and didn't get in. But try again, but discriminate in which shows you try to. Read them carefully. Know what you're up against. Know who your juror is. The style of the juror doesn't make any difference at all in terms of picking a show, I can tell you that. The juror looks for, as I said before, a range, so you will not, I am not any much more willing to put an abstract in than I am a very traditional landscape. It all depends on the quality of the painting, the expertise, and the perspective or uniqueness of a piece in my mind. I also personally look just for that edge, that somebody pushed things just a little bit further, that almost went bad because it's just that close to the edge of pushing a painting. That's what excites me in addition to a new and unusual perspective. Thank you.